Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And the Batwoman drama continues. Get the popcorn. This is more interesting than the actual show. And that is true. Uh, so now, now Ruby Rose is being called a liar. A liar by her co-stars and by Warner Brothers. This reminds me an awful lot of the uh, Ray Fisher situation. Yeah. There are definitely two sides to every story. You said that yesterday, though, too. You said yeah, there's always I did. two sides to every story. Why is it always Warner? It's always Warner. It's always I don't DC know. stuff. It's not always, but there tends to be a lot. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Uh, we're gonna talk about the updates here that they're they're calling her a liar. They said she definitely was fired. She was definitely difficult. Uh, for those of you who didn't watch the video yesterday, check it out. She unloaded on Warner Brothers, on the CW, on the showrunner of Batwoman. Ruby Rose claimed she was. She was not uh, fired, she, or she was fired uh, wrongly for voicing concerns. Uh, she yeah, did she, not she quit. Didn't quit. But they admit yeah. that she didn't quit. Yeah, yeah. So they kind of admit that, so they did agree with her on that. Um, it's just weird, like, I mean, why now? I mean, if she was making it all up and stuff, okay, why would, you know, I mean, why would she wait till now? That is a good, uh, a good observation. I, I think that she did have some sort of NDA or something, a gag order that she had like two years or something she wasn't allowed to say. And now it's up. And now it's Striketober and everybody's complaining about know. their employers past and present. So but now they're all kind of the woodwork to say, nope, she's a liar. She's so a liar. Warner Brothers get a very vague statement, basically like, we looked into it, trust us, kind of thing, you know. And everybody trust else us. is like coming out, you know. Trust they, us, we're Warner Brothers. Well, people, 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 <laughs> yes, pretty much. Anyway, we're going to talk about this. Yep. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 238,000 subs. Woo! Thank you for the support. We do talk about DC Comics, talk about uh, pop culture news. Talk about Pop Tarts. Talk about Pop Tarts. Uh, we're talking about Batwoman because, you know, frankly, we don't give a shit about the show, but there's so much drama around the show. And yeah, Ruby Rose's exit was unusual. Um, and it seemed kind of forced. And now we know, yeah, she was basically fired. She says, uh, you know, that she got pushed out because she was voicing concerns about safety on the set. They're like, nah, you're just, you were difficult. And well, then the there are people are mad. Oh yeah, she was fired. Yeah. So let's go, um, here, check out on comic book resources. They have an article. LA times has an article. Warner brothers TV dismisses Ruby Rose's Batwoman allegations as revisionist. History. I think that's funny coming from Hollywood, revisionist history, and that's pretty much all they ever do. But I think that's funny. But anyway, here's what their comment was. Do you have the comment? Um, yeah, despite the revisionist history that Ruby Rose is now sharing online, aimed at the producers, the cast and crew, the network and the studio. Uh, let me see. The, tr the truth is that Warner Brothers Television had decided not to exercise its option to engage Ruby for season two of Batwoman based on multiple complaints about workplace behavior that were extensively reviewed and handled privately out of respect for all concerned. They don't give you any examples, though. Hmm. We have lot, multiple complaints, but we're not gonna we're we're, we're not gonna tell you we're just because it's for privacy reasons. We're just not we're not gonna back that up with any evidence. Yeah. Now apparently, uh, Caroline Freeze, I think she's the showrunner. She made her Twitter private. Yeah, but you know, be fair though. She's probably getting shit she, from all that's sides. That's yeah. it. If she said this, she could be getting shit, even if it's true or otherwise. We don't know what's true, what's not. We said that yesterday. We don't know if that necessarily is an admission of guilt. It just could be that they, she was being harassed or that people at Warner Brothers told her to take it down, you know, just to, you know, shut it down for now. She made it private. Uh, there could be other reasons if we're being completely fair. Yeah. Um, a person familiar with the situation but not authorized to discuss it publicly told The Times that many of Rose's allegations were unfounded, specifically those involving Roth and additional injuries to the star and others on set. So again, uh, you know, two sides to Right. To we don't story. know who the person familiar but not authorized to discuss it was either, you know? No. It could be someone no. that was named, for all we know. But, you know. So here is a statement from um, uh, Baxter. This is uh, Alexander J. Baxter, who worked on season one of the Arrowverse series. Uh, Baxter, the CEO and founder of uh, Consulate Films, issued the following statement to comic book resources regarding his time Working with Rose on Batwoman. Holy shit. Okay, let's let's go That's through That's okay. This. She got to say a lot. This is She did. He, she went on and on and on. You can and read because I keep like, I'm getting sick, so I'm having trouble. 
Okay, when I first got into the industry, I was very fortunate to get on certain shows like Supergirl, Sabrina, and a few others well, here and there. you say fortunate. I say, mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> but the highlight of my entry to film was Batwoman Season 1. I was an actor aspiring to know more about the film industry, and when the job came up, I was so excited. Being a DC fan and a huge fan of Warner Brothers, I jumped at the opportunity. Yeah, there's some typos in here, so <laughs> I'm like stumbling over it. My philosophy was that I could learn as much as I could on set and then go on to do my own films. Little did I know the hell that away to me, that waits me, me, awaited me on those sets. The production company was professional, dialed in in every way, in, in every way fran- fantastic. The crew was lovely, hardworking, and dedicated to countless night shoots. It sounded to be an amazing experience in the making. Then came Ruby Rose. From day one, where her supposed injury stopped her from doing 60% of her job, she began her first day on the show not acknowledging a single crew member besides anyone above the line. And as the days stretched dawn, who's stretched dawn? He sounds like a porn I star. I don't know. The 18, I think he, he, I think he just, yeah, transcribed like this. stretched on? Yeah. Stretched on. Okay, don't stretch, stretch dawn. dawn. Stretch anyway. dawn. The 18 hour Saturdays for some of us in the crew, things got worse when she showed up late most days. Uh, she didn't have her lines memorized. And whenever she interacted with anyone below the line, production assistant Alex Crew Grapes, <laughs> <laughs> it was as though we were beneath her boots. Oh my She's God. Alex Crew Grapes and Stretch Dawn. Uh, they're complaining about Ruby Rose too. She stormed off the set. She yelled at people. And whenever she interacted with any of us production assistants, we were disregarded as the trash we picked up. That's unfortunate. Uh, one day at the studio, we spent the entire morning setting up a requested green room, six heaters, because she was used to the Australian hot weather and her table of snacks. Uh, only to have her show up, giggle, walk away, and uh, say she's good. We chalked it up to another Ruby is just giving orders for the sake of giving orders moment and moved on. Then I was holding a door open for her after having worked over 15 hours at that point in the freezing cold weather, and she came billowing through the door that just opened. She spilt, spit in her food. Spilt. She spilled her food. She looked at, uh, at it, then up at me and said, well, and then I stormed off and left me to clean up her mess. That's what it felt like working beneath Ruby, cleaning up her mess. She never thanked us. She only made demands that left us all exhausted emotionally and physically. She was a dictator to work for, and having been nothing but a production assistant eager to get into the industry, she made me consider quitting. If this was the industry I was going to get into, I sure as hell wasn't going to work for Entitled Tyrants. Living downtown, I met one of her close friends on a dating app, and he shared with me stories of them partying and getting high on all assortments of drugs. And funnily enough, the days where she showed up eight hours late to set were the days he spoke about. She didn't care how long we waited for her and made sure everything was perfect and ready, and she just cared about her personal party lifestyle. We worked countless long days, always going into overtime because she was either late or uh, not off book or some other reason relating to her not wanting to be there. From the moment we started the show... She made every new person that came on uneasy and unsupported. She was a horrible star and made so many of us feel like we were helping make a show for a dictator. Did we mention she's a dictator? Yeah, I think we mentioned that a couple of times. Filmmakers, no matter what position they're in on a film set, deserve to be treated with respect. I that, agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. That's how I was taught growing up and in film school. And when I read her article claiming that the production was at fault, it infuriated me because having been there, I don't want to stand by and let her badmouth the company that she tried to screw over. No matter how bad your day is, you have a right to yeah. not be cruel. You Season one cruel, yeah. was her reign of cruelty. So, yeah, lots of people now coming out saying, hey, she's a freaking liar, including Luke Fox, her co-star, coming yeah. out and saying she was not a peach. Yeah. So a lot of people are coming out and saying that she wasn't she was she was difficult. Yep. Batwoman star Cameras Johnson responds to Ruby Rose's allegations. So, yeah, he's Luke Fox. He's Batwing. In season two, and this is what he said uh, via Twitter. Bat fam, you know, I couldn't go the whole day without saying something. And he's a blue check. That's that's typical. Yeah. Uh, I love y'all. I don't think I've seen all the love today, but yeah, fam, she was fired. And it is very hard to be fired when you're the lead. Imagine what you have to do for that to happen. Uh, since it was claimed she walked away last year, I'm sure some of you may be pretty confused or upset, and even more so that a lot of lies were spread today. Just know we have a lot of great souls working on this show, and none of that changes uh, that from the top to the bottom. Love you all, West Coast fam. Enjoying new episodes of Batwoman starring Javicia Leslie. Okay, but here's the thing. Uh, I don't know. We don't know what's what. No. 
Um, I'm just sitting here like, though, people that are on the show don't want the show to fail, even though it's been failed since before it started. <laughs> it's um, a stillbirth. Um, it yeah, pretty much. Um, so, of course, they're, they're going to they're gonna back the show they're on because they don't want the show to end and they don't have a job. But that being said, there's a lot of people coming out saying it wasn't true. But we have learned is that she was fired, which is kind of kind of what she alluded to. And now they kind of confirmed that part of it. Yeah, I mean, she she did say that she was basically fired for, she said she had safety concerns. But yeah, there are two sides of her story. Because what's going to happen is, I mean, look, Luke Fox here, he's not going to want to lose his gig. You know, they cancel mm-hmm. the show. It's like you're out the, you're out the door. And right. he's not going to throw Warner under the bus if he's still working there. Um, you know, we saw with uh, Ray Fisher, it was like he was already well over yeah. Cyborg and... You know, he's like, I'm done. This is a mess. I mean, I don't even know because I just don't understand why she'd bring it up now. There got to be a re- there has to be a reason. There has to be some timely connection uh, to why she would. And now as people are saying that she's lying. Um, of course, people that were accused of doing shitty things are saying she's lying because. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know. I don't know who's telling you who's lying here, guys. If I'm going to be honest, I, don't, I have no effing idea. We're just telling you what they're all saying and you can draw your own conclusions. But why is it when there's this much ugliness, it's always around DC Comics live action mm-hmm. projects, you know? Like actually in the case of Ray Fisher, at first I was like, oh, sure, Ray, you're just kind of, a, you're you're like kind of the low man on the totem pole in this movie and you're just complaining, whatever. But then when you actually saw the cider cut and you saw how much of Cyborg's story had been cut. It makes sense. And other people were backing up that Joss Whedon is a piece of shit. You know, it actually does make sense. In this case, I'm thinking if she gets a reputation for being difficult to work for, she may never work again. Mm-hmm. They might be like, oh, Hell no, we're staying away from her. So she might be doing this just to save her own ass because the word gets out that she's a diva. You know, people aren't going to be so yeah. inclined to work with her. I have no idea because I wasn't there. And I'm I'm just saying it's it, it's a little weird, like on both sides. Like you see, like, well, why would she bring this up now? That yeah. leads some credence what she said. Plus, she basically said that she didn't quit. And then they're confirming that. Um, but then there's a lot of people like coming out saying that she was a pain to work for. And even as the production assistants are saying that, and they could just be trying to kiss, you know, Warner's ass. I don't yeah. know. Make your own conclusions from this one. But this is like a complete train wreck, and it's worth getting the popcorn out no matter what. Much, much more entertaining than the actual show. Now, the fact does remain that people were injured severely on yes, the show. Yes, that, that is provable. And, there, and that is provable. And there were, apparently, there did have some safety issues. So that part, you know, is unfortunate. And for that, I won't be saying eat popcorn. That's just absolute shit. And things like that need to change in Hollywood in general. Uh, you know, it could be that a little bit of both is true. And I tend to, I tend to believe this when I see situations like this and you can see verification kind mm-hmm. of like on both sides. I think it's, I think both might be true. It might be that she is a pain in the ass, but... She did have legitimate concerns and people are trying to throw her under the bus to keep to keep Batwoman on the air, keep and, it going. But she was a pain in their but ass. But she was too. a pain in the ass yeah. too. You know, so it, who the hell knows? Truth my mom always says truth always like lies in the middle usually. Usually. So or what's the common denominator? It was one of those two things she always says, but you know. All right, so we gotta wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.